FAA has announced it will order inspections of engine fan plates like the one involved in the deadly southwest plane explosion. Investigators say it appears a fan blade snapped off, causing debris to hit the plane at 32,000 feet. Is your airplane physically on fire? No, it's not on fire, but part of it's missing. The NTSB believes metal fatigue led to the brake, which ripped through the engine and sent debris through a cabin window. Passengers are calling Captain Tammy Jo Schultz a hero for safely landing the plane. It was so cool and calm and put together and in, in the face of a crisis, and that is Tammy Jo. That's how she's wired. When the window burst, 43-year-old Jennifer Ridden was partially sucked out of the plane. The medical examiner said that she died of blunt impact trauma of the head, neck, and torso. The married mother of two from New Mexico is the first passenger to die on a U.S. airliner since 2009. Experts are not concerned about the fleet of Boeing 737 jets in service right now. The 737 is the best-selling commercial jetliner in history. At least one member of Congress is now calling for hearings on aviation safety. President Donald Trump says he is optimistic about his planned summit with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, but he is ready to back out of it if it becomes clear no progress will be made. Five summit locations are under consideration for the official meeting set up by CIA Director Mike Pompeo during a secret trip to North Korea recently. Most likely spot would either be in the demilitarized zone or on a U.S. Navy vessel off the Korean Peninsula, and it could happen in the coming weeks. We've never been in a position like this with that regime, whether it's father, grandfather, or son, and uh, I hope to have a very successful meeting. Meanwhile, Pompeo met with senators on Capitol Hill to uh, trump up support in his bid for Secretary of State. Senate Foreign Relations Committee is expected to vote on Pompeo's nomination next week. The Minnesota governor's race is a little less crowded. Former Republican Party chair Keith Downey dropped out. In an email to supporters, Downey said the opportunity for him to win in November closed. He said former Governor Tim Pawlenty entering the race dramatically changed the landscape. In less than a month, Pawlenty raised more than $1 million for his campaign, nearly three times as much as his closest competitor. Minnesota Timberwolves have some work to do if they have any shot at advancing in the NBA playoffs. Carl Anthony Towns had another disappointing game, scoring all five of his points in the first quarter. Eight seed Timberwolves are in the playoffs for the first time since 2004, and they got whooped. They lost 102 to 82 to the top seeded Houston Rockets. Houston is now up two games to nothing in the best of seven series. Luckily, the Timberwolves coming home. Game three and four at Target Center Saturday and Monday. Wolves also announced that Justin Patton is out indefinitely, one of their draft picks. He's been in the G League. He underwent surgery on his left foot. Late one in San Juan, 16 innings before Eddie Rosario scored the winning walk-off run in his homeland of Puerto Rico. A great moment there, 2-1 to one the final score as the Twins beat Cleveland. Minnesota used eight pitchers, and this game took so long that Minnesota's Joe Maurer and Zach Duke both aged a year. They were 34 when the game started, and they were 35 when the game ended. Today is their birthday, so their birthday started right around the 16th inning. Twins are off today, start a weekend series in Tampa Bay tomorrow night. Now, I know they love their baseball in Puerto Rico, but mm -hmm. to sit through that long of a game, that long of a low-scoring game yeah. is a true fan. That, yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> and, well, I mean, there was power at the stadium. You know, yesterday they had that yeah. full island power outage. So Probably know, the place to be. Yeah, so, yeah, 